Slavery is this thing that has touched every facet of American life. Yes. No one is unaffected by it. This is the thing that you've written about in your career as a journalist. For that to still be controversial, mm -hmm. that has to have some emotional effect on you. That particular one doesn't, because it's expected. Yeah. I mean, but in a country that has willfully refused to make that connection of how foundational slavery was, other things have surprised me. Uh, I've been writing about racial inequality for 20 years, but I've never had uh, my work uh, degraded by the President of the United States. Critical race theory the 1619 Project and the crusade against American history is toxic propaganda. I've never had lawmakers trying to prohibit my work from being taught. Again, not surprising, but things don't have to be surprising to still be painful and difficult and, and taxing. So, you know, it's been a lot of bourbon consumed in the last two years. Okay. <laughs> what, what, what kind of bourbon are we talking? Oh, God, I... Um... I'm not picky with mine. I'll, I'll drink no? any bourbon. No. Really? Any I'll, bourbon? I'll take well bourbon. My body can handle it. I can't, but I'll, I'll drink it. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're I'm still... not usually speechless, but... Well bourbon? Well bourbon, it doesn't matter. I like good bourbon. Um, but, but I would love to hear you talk about you being in the space where you are, going into households that are not used to seeing someone like yourself there. This is my time. I'm having my moment. I'm basically the Lizzo of China right now. <laughs> there are these deeply entrenched ideas about like what an Asian person should do in front of a camera. Mm. One of my favorite movies is Breakfast at Tiffany's and yet every time I watch it I go, oh right, Mickey Rooney does this wildly offensive yellow face portrayal, you know? Like everything that I try to like, like is, is tainted by this weird mental model of what an Asian person does in film and television. I feel like I probably spent a lot of my career playing to those things and then realizing, oh my God, I don't have to do that. So that's the context that I have to sort of like live in and sit with. Right around July of this year, you said something about institutions, about how like after you spent so long proving yourself, working your way into an institution, at a certain point you have to tell yourself to not force your way in. You know, I've had really two mantras as an adult, and one of them is, you should be ashamed to be the only one like you in any room that you're in. Ah, oh, <laughs> sorry. Right. I, I, I never <laughs> want to be the only one, and so my job, if I somehow make it into these spaces, is I have to be uh, pulling other people in with me. Yes. And the other is to try to be the person I needed when I was trying to make it myself. You know, what could I have used? Nicole Hannah-Jones. <laughs> Wow, thank you. Before we leave here, though, yes. you have to, we're gonna pinky promise that you will never take another drink of well bourbon again. I feel like we, we have to make that commitment to each other. For you, Nicole Hannah Jones, I promise, thank you. pinky promise, I will never drink well bourbon again. Okay, thank okay. you. Shall we? Wow! <laughs>